Uh-huh. I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Man, oh man, got a radio show. Yeah, I do. God's so big to me, man. I just have to tell you about it. I can't help it. It's rather obvious to me how big, how good God is. He's absolutely tremendous. He's off the chain. He own one. He be clowning. He be just showing out. Man, I'm just over here just on the receiving end. You know, uh, if you out there, start your mission today. Start your mission today. What are you waiting for? Why do we as people delay what we want or delay the process to begin what we want, our hopes, our dreams, our desires. Why won't you start your mission today? Why don't we all decide together that just individually, look, you listening, you got something that you've been dreaming about. You got an ambition of yours that's not yet fulfilled. You got goals you haven't accomplished yet. Everybody has them. Everybody's got them. Everybody's got something that's that's on the table that they haven't yet attacked yet. What are you waiting for? Start your mission today. Stop the procrastination now. The procrastination is only hurting you, yourself. If you got a goal, an aspiration, a dream, and you fall off track momentarily, you can get back to that. Because God know where you left off. Now, you may have to accomplish a few more things since you stopped for a long period of time, but God know where you left off. You can get back on track. I Look, man, this dream of being on TV since I was a kid, it got off track now. It got off track. I just kept it as one of the dreams. And in some real dark moments when it looked like it wasn't going to happen, all I was hanging on to was just the hope that one day it could. But that's what faith is really about. Faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. But faith gives you the confidence to keep hoping, man. Sometimes it just keep hope alive. Sometimes, you heard Jesse Jackson say it, just keep hope alive. Sometimes, man, it's just the hope. I was hanging on the hope. And I'm talking about when it got real ugly and funky out there for me. When it looked like I wasn't going to ever make it. And all of the facts was in and everything pointed in the direction you're not going to make it. You done really messed up this time. Then I sat there and I just hung on to the hope. 
But man, that's what I'm saying. If you got a dream or an aspiration or vision or something, when you fall off track and you want to go get back in line, God holds your place. See, he held on to that for me. He knew I was off track and out of line, but he said, okay, here's where we stop. You want to be on TV. Now, when you get it together and you quit tripping and you come and you turn to me, I'm going to hold your place, put you back in line, then we go and finish the journey. That took me a lot longer to get here than I wanted to, but then it was necessary because I needed all of them mishaps to happen to me along the way. So when I got on the radio one day, which I did not see coming, Steve Harvey got a radio show, y'all. That's why I say it every day. See, because of this radio show that I didn't see coming, now I have stories to tell. I got experiences to share. And I can tell you about me better than I can tell you about anybody. And I done been through enough where it's relatable, where enough people can go, man, that happened to me. Appreciate you saying that. That's what it was for. See, I get it now. See, at the time, though, I didn't, I didn't like what was happening to me. At the time, I was really in total disagreement with God on a lot of stuff he was pulling off on me. But in essence, I was really pulling it off on myself. But through his grace and mercy, he kept me through all of my mistakes, all my bad decisions, all my miscalculations, all my misfires, all the times I knowingly stepped out there and did wrong. He forgave me. He said, because, man, if you ever come to me, I have a plan for you that is going to be far and above. It will supersede everything you've ever dreamed of. That's what I did. I just got sick of me good and sick of me and I turned it over to God and then God started working and here I am today now is he through with me yet nope have I arrived yet nope but guess what the journey is cool you know it's like I was talking to this young brother the other day about comedy he's a really good stand-up you know this young dude is really good He said, man, what is this I feel every night before I go on stage? I don't know what it is. I just want it off me. I said, sir, listen to me, young young dude. This thing that climbs on my back every night before I go on stage, I don't know what it is. It's got something to do with pressure. It's got something to do with anticipation. It's got a whole lot to do with the fear of falling. He said, what you mean by that? I said, every night I walk out on stage, it's like I'm about to go and step off a cliff. I said, it's a sickening feeling. He said, man, but you do so well. I said, that's because the parachute opens. I said, but I want you to understand something. When I first walk out there, it's just stepping off the cliff. Now, these jokes provide a parachute, which slows my descent when I jump off the cliff. And I turn it into a glide. And then I take the audience this way and I swing them back over to that way. We might swing out to the Colorado Rockies. We may go down to Miami with this joke. We may take it on out to L.A. And I just swing back and forth till I land softly. The crowd cheers. The night is over with. I said, but it's been too many nights, though, when I walked off that cliff and I pulled the cord and the parachute didn't open. I said, now I'm just free falling out there for 30 minutes. Ain't no jokes working. Ain't the parachute didn't open. I said, so see, that's what it's like for me. And then you know what I found out? If you done walked off the cliff in life and you ain't got no God in your life, it's like not having a parachute. You step off the cliff and you just free falling. Now see, we all, now that fall gets you closer to the grave, right? See, we all heading to the grave from the moment we're born. But the cool thing about a relationship with God is, when you step off the cliff and you got God, he a parachute. You still going down, but it's a nice ride. And God just helps your, your descent appear more like a rise and more like a euphoric fall instead of not having no God in your life. And you just walking off that cliff every day, free falling, ain't got no cord. You steady pulling. Ah! You hollering the whole way because you messed around with yourself and ain't let God come into your life and provide a parachute for you. I would rather have a parachute since I got to jump every day than to not have one. God has been like a parachute for me. Ask me where that came from. I can't tell you. But like I always say, most good things that happen in my life that I can't explain is usually him. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Ladies, I said, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? This is the Steve Harvey Morning Show, live and in color. This color portion is just simply provided by the people that's on it and the type of commentary that we will preside. This is not a racial issue. This is just in living color, as in the TV show. The famous show by the uh, Wayans Brothers. That was In Living Color. Uh, when televisions first came out with it, that was your TV was in color. We have that. The Peacock on NBC was known for its color. That's what we're referring to. That's what it is. A little history lesson. If you didn't get it, don't worry about it. I didn't either. Shirley Strawberry. <laughs> don't forget about the sister, <laughs> Kim Wayans. Good morning, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Call it for real. In living color, what's Ooh. going on? <laughs> what's up, what's Junior? Morning, up? Morning, Unc. Morning, everybody. That was my hey. show, boy. Yeah. yeah. By Marshall Bill. Junior, your mic a little low. <laughs> Nephew Tommy. In living color, <laughs> hated it. <laughs> <laughs> Them boys was funny, Boy? man. Yeah, no, that was his turn. Man, can't, can't can't do that anymore. But super funny, it was right? Yeah, yeah. When well, he was trying to learn how to play, you think football. the climate too 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 different oh, to pull a show like that? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And, and comedy, you know, suffers more than I think anyone any any field, right, Steve? Yeah, I think well, only night, the guys. I think only the guys who are unaffected by sponsorships can go out there and say what they want to say. Anybody that's affected by sponsorship oh. ha- has to lay low. Like a Dave Chappelle. Oh, Dave Chappelle is not Same affected by he sponsorship. Ain't right. He ain't got to worry about nothing. Thus, mm-hmm. the greatest comedy special I've seen since <laughs> Richard Pryor. So great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, i tell you something else, though, man. The dude on uh, Survivor on... Uh, on the UFC, Joe Rogan. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Man, man, watch his Netflix comedy special, Joe Rogan. Really? Joe, Joe Rogan. Okay. Very, very funny. He got the black shirt okay. on. Mm-hmm. Boy had me hollering. Only one little mm-hmm. section threw me a little bit, but other than that, that boy was <laughs> you on fire? funny, man. <laughs> he always funny, been funny, man. man. He always been funny. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about, I'm talking about bark out funny. You know, I, I never saw him because I just thought he was the. Uh, I didn't know he did stand up for real. I saw a special man. I was completely impressed, man. Probably second funniest thing I've seen. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go watch. These. I mean, that's on there right now. I have now. to watch it. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, I very, I very funny. Oh, Joe yeah. Rogan. Dion Cole's Cold Hearted was another funny special I saw. Oh like man, <laughs> from Blackish. I love, yeah. I love yeah. me some Dion Cole. Mm-hmm. Now. Yeah, yeah. Dion Cole's Cold Hearted was funny, man. He was funny. He's got good rhythms. Yeah, so. he's a funny guy. He thinks. And there's an Italian <laughs> dude got a special on. I saw. I'll tell you what. As soon as I get his name, that boy mm-hmm. was funny too. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, that's All my right. comedy right, review tomorrow. for today. Just, I know. I'm just glad you you've watched some things. All right. Coming up at 32 minutes after the hour. Inside of something funny, what's something your parents did when you were a kid that a parent could never do now? We'll talk about mm. it mm. right after this. Oh. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we go, guys. Here's a question. Uh, What's something that your parents did when when you were a kid, all right, that a parent could never do now? Uh, Here's an email, Steve, from Joe in Virginia. It says, hey, Steve, Morning Show crew. Uh, There's so many things my parents did when I was a kid that would be considered horrible now. Things like leaving me in the car while they ran into the store, my pops sipping a beer on a hot summer day while driving. Uh, <laughs> With the can out the yeah. window. I thought back that was normal. Yeah, back when life was good, right? Uh, so my question is, did your parents do things that would be considered illegal now, and what were they? Mm. <laughs> Not illegal, Yeah. <though. laughs> or, I mean, just like wow. his parents, yeah. Leaving you in the car. I got my ass whooped at Woolworth and Woolco. Mm. Mm. Uh, did I like, just say that? You tried. No, no you, yeah. you tried. You said, you, yes, you I said. did. No, no you, you didn't. Did. Say did. What did he say? Woolworth and uh, Woodco. Yeah. What was that? Yeah. yeah. You said that? You, yeah. you did, Tommy. I know you tried, and it sounded kind of like you did. That's a stole, Junior, in case you didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. No, Woolco? No, didn't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, that yeah, that's all. Story. That's true. We all know about them ass whooping, but my my mama and them had the people down the street beat me. <laughs> yeah. Can't oh, do that now. It takes a village. Yeah. It takes yeah. a village. Outside. People down the street was allowed to give me a whooping. <laughs> <Yeah>. Miss <laughs> Brown, Miss <laughs> Gill. What, what, what did you do, Steve? What did you do? What did I do? Being a boy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, Broke a window. jumped over the fence in her garden. Oh. You know, Landed all, on anything, her Anything. Pl- anything. <laughs> you know, Landed put firecrackers in her garden. Anything. Just. just <laughs> Firecrackers oh, in the boom, garden. Boom, 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 just blowing up garden. <laughs> she should have beat your behind. <laughs> I did everything, she man. Be- <laughs> yeah. How about guys riding in the car with no seat belts? But your mama know how to throw that hand, hand over there. <laughs> yes. And Hold make on. a seat belt yeah. for you. Yeah. Could stand up and hang my head out the window like a dog. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and with these big ass lips, I'd be out looking out the window and couldn't see nothing. Well, get your lips down out your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot uh, different now. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't remember car seats, none of that. No, oh, yeah, I remember uh, no car seats. No, we ain't had none no, of that. It was little... five, six kids in the back seat. Yeah, right. my little cousin fell out of the car. We didn't know it had to circle around and go back go and back, get, get her. Base. Go yes. back get the baby. My cousin too, Shirley. Yes. We were in Florida, <laughs> fell out the car, the rental car, and they said, yeah. I'll be damn. But, and yeah. <laughs> Had to turn around. That's all. And then got the baby, picked her up, and started back to driving again. Smoking. Hold up. Anywhere, huh? Hold up. Sitting in the back of a pickup truck in a lawn chair. (laughs) Oh, that's so illegal now. That's so illegal. That's scary. Going to church. That's scary. Going to church. Two two lawn two lawn chairs in the back of a pickup. Going to church. Boy. Boy, the struggle was real oh. back then. They don't even know. Man. <laughs> How about Hold giving up. Tie your no, dog no. to a tree outside yes. in the back uh. for years. <laughs> years? <laughs> Decades? You, mean, you ain't you never been in the front no. yard. <laughs> they didn't live in the house, Steve, and sleep in the bed with uh, you? What? <laughs> what? A dog? You get your ass outside and get to be in a dog. Uh-huh. You didn't walk your dog every day? Yeah, no, no, he walked around that dog. tree. No, no. Dog knew no. every inch of that ground. And wasn't no, and wasn't no damn pooper scooper either. It, uh, it was just that. Oh, we yeah. were picking Ain't it nobody up. Ain't nobody picking that up. Oh, if you stepped in it, you just stepped in it. That's, <laughs> sure. That's your yeah. bad. Look where you going. Oh, no. Remember you was eight, though? If you was eight or nine, we got sent to the store. Go get some Thunderbird and go get a uh, six-pack. And some oh, cigarettes. Yeah. And some cigarettes. And yep. some cigarettes. Come on yeah. back. Yep. Yeah. You can't oh, buy- yeah. Oh, can't oh, do that oh a kid can't buy no cigarettes no more. Oh, uh-uh. No. Mm-mm. Not at all. No. And then sometimes they would send you with a note for the cigarettes. Yeah. Saying that yeah. the parent gave the kid permission, you would give it to the man in the store, and they would give you the cigarettes. Not uh-huh. at Mr. Okay. Moore's delicatessen in the hood. He didn't give a damn who came in there. You got who the money, you get the product. <laughs> yeah, that's you it. buy a fifth <laughs> from me permission. if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> you can be five and buy a fifth. Hey, man, let me tell you something. I, I'm delicatessen. Yeah, yeah. You know, because, cause, you know, back in the day, you're supposed to buy your liquor from the state store, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, well, well, well they had what was called oh, state okay. stores, where you okay. bought your hard liquor oh, really? from state stores. Okay, I didn't know You know, you could okay. buy wine and stuff from uh-huh. a store, but hard liquor so they could tax it was called the state oh. store. Okay. okay. Right. Also, well, Mr. Store. Moore. Be at the grocery store, though. Right. Okay. Now, mm-hmm. see, see, Mr. Moore would buy a lot of liquor from the state store and slightly mark it up where you wouldn't have to go to the state <laughs> store. Uh, you just come down here to the corner store and get, because he knew what they drank. Mm-hmm. Canadian Windsor, mm-hmm. E&J. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, Eric and Jerry. He said Canadian Windsor. Christian God. Brothers. <laughs> no, they had that old liquor. What no? Old Forrester. Old Forrester. Oh, yeah. Forrester. <laughs> well, when you poured it in you, you had to have, like, you know, conversation. I'm finna go on and do this. <laughs> you had to talk yourself into you talk it. Talk yourself yeah. into drinking. I'm yeah. about to go on and do this. That's this wasn't Louie or nothing like that. You had to really <laughs> focus, yeah. man, uh-huh. to drink back yeah, in the moment. day. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. We're like that. Uh, yeah. Everclear. Oh, that wow. was unleaded gasoline. <laughs> that's, gas, that's, gas. that's the one. That, <laughs> no. My yeah. uncle stayed on it. 
You couldn't smell. Go down there and it. bring me a fearful bumpy face. <laughs> yeah. And uh, gin. 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 yeah, tell a them or uh, tell them tell them slick sent mm-hmm. you down there. They know you. <laughs> <laughs> they know you. And that's all regular. you needed to get it. That's all yeah. you had to have to get it. My dad is slick up. You little stupid ass boy. I know who he is. He's stuck. Can't talk either. <laughs> Studying there. Get out the way so I can make this money while you spitting all over the counter and stuff. Get your ass out the way. All right, guys. So Coming up next, nephew Tommy's run that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, Dwayne Wade fires back at social media trolls for criticizing his son Zion's appearance in the family photo. Plus, Billy D. Williams says he sees himself as feminine and masculine. Uh, we'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time for the nephew to run that prank back. We'll talk about it, I'm nephew. Let your what hand you got? Fall off now. Okay. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I got to let your hand fall off. Oh, man. No. <laughs> what is yeah. happening? I, yeah, he said what it. Is this, when is these meetings? <laughs> Listen, uh, pump your brakes. That's what we got, Cat Dog. Pump your brakes. Let's go. Hello? Hello. I'm trying to reach Natalie, please. Yes, this is Natalie. Natalie, how you doing? My name is Darren. I'm with, with the uh, Homeowners Association. Oh, okay. Hey, Dan. How you doing? Listen, um... <laughs> Uh, we got a we got a bit of a problem. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, who's who? Who actually brings your kids home from school uh, each day? Oh, my mom gets my kids for me, and she drops them off. Okay. Why? Okay. Why? Okay. Well, we have a we have a bit of a problem. Uh, the kids are fine. There's there's no issue with the kids at all. But um, you know, we've had a meeting here at the HOA. We've been getting some complaints. Uh, it seems like your mother is is uh, really speeding down the street real fast, and you know everyone's complaining about it. That you know it's a lot of kids walking home from school, and it seems like your mom is is driving real fast when she's uh, coming down the street uh, to drop your kids off. Did you know anything about this? Uh, no, not at all. That doesn't even sound like her. Okay, what type of car does she? My mother. Does she, uh, let me ask you this, Natalie. We're, we're, we, from what I understand, it is a. Um, what, what kind of car does your mom have? Is it a, a Ford Escape or something like that? Some a little SUV. Is that what your mom has? Yeah, she has a little red SUV. Okay. All right. So uh, the problem is, is that that that's the same car. That's the one we're talking about. And it seems like you know your mother is is flying down the street, and she drops the kids off, and when she leaves, she's flying back out of the neighborhood. And a couple of times, some of the neighbors have told her to slow down, and, you know, I I don't know if she's flicked them off or set something out the window, you know, but, you know, this is stuff that we just cannot tolerate. Huh. Well, it really doesn't sound like my mom, but, you know, I was Okay, well, listen, listen, mom. you know what, Natalie, what, what we're not going to do is what you're not going to do is act like it's not your mama. It's your mother that's doing this. So what we need you to do is tell your mama to slow our <laughs> down so we don't have this problem, all right? Because I, I, I tried to be nice with you at first, but if you're going to be in denial thinking it's not your mama, then we got an issue. First of all, Darren from HOA, I need you to watch your tone and who the f- you're talking to, all right? I need you to calm that all the way down, okay, all right? I said that down. I would you talk to, to her. You need to, you need to slow your damn mama down. That's what you need to do. Slow your mama down right. the way she drives no, the damn street. No, what you need street. to do is stand in the middle of the street. If she's flying down, it's so hopefully she can knock you out the way, okay? Don't talk to me like that. You're being rude and disrespectful. I'm going to ask her if it's her because I don't think it's her, but you're not going to talk to me like that. Okay, so your mama can just drive down the street and act a damn fool. My mama can do cool. whatever she want to do. My mama can do whatever she want to do. She a grown-ass woman. Do, she can't do it in the neighborhood that I'm a member of the HOA at. She can't do it there, okay? Now, I don't mind having your mama arrested with your kids in the car if I got to. I wish you would. I wish you would have my mama arrested with my kids in the car. You're going to have more problems than you ever had, okay? You better not have my mama arrested. You're going to get arrested, and you're going to be sent to the hospital. How about that? Okay, let me tell you something. Tell your mama to slow her down 
down in these streets. This is the last one that I'm giving y'all. This is the last one. Well, you know what I'm saying? You ain't got to give no warnings, okay? We can have a real conversation about it. We can meet and talk about it. Because you ain't going to talk to me like that, and you ain't telling my mama nothing. I ain't telling her to slow down for nothing. What you going to do? What you going to do, Derek? As a matter of fact, let's meet about it. And I'm going to bring my husband, too, since you got so much to say. You know what I'm saying? I want you to have, keep that same energy, okay, with my husband. I want you to talk to him like you talking to me. Hey, 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 let me tell you something. I ain't worried about your husband or none of that, all right? I'm going to say this right here. I'm going to say this right here. Tommy is the one that told us that your mama was speeding down the street. Tommy the one said it. Tommy? Who the hell is Tommy? Tommy said your mama was the one running up and down the street fast going 40, 50 miles an hour. Tommy the one said that. I don't know who Tommy is, but Tommy can kiss my You can kiss my and any other neighbors who got something to say about my mama can kiss my ass. How about that? Tell well, me let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Do you know nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show? Do you know him? Son of a bitch. <laughs> you got me. You got me. Oh, you got me. Natalie, your sister. Oh, my God. <laughs> March, <laughs> Holiday <laughs> Comedy <laughs> Jam, Holiday Comedy Jam, Philadelphia. It's at the Met Philadelphia. Tickets are on sale right now. All Ticketmaster outlets and at the Met box office, it is the Met Philadelphia. That's Friday, December the 20th. You got the one and only J. Anthony Brown, Kill Junior Spates, hosted by yours truly, and Earthquake in the building. It's the Holiday Comedy Jam, WDASFM, hosted by them. And uh, we will be there. Yeah, Se- 17 Straight days. Ignorant. Hey, Tommy. Straight, straight, ignorant. Yeah. Um, I, I must uh ready to love uh last weekend. How's it going? It, it looks really Surely good. So the ready to love is going, but the numbers are through the roof. Yeah, because really? I watch it all the time. What you need to know, Shirley? <laughs> <laughs> Girl, I'm going to tell you a reality update on Thursday. I'm going to break the whole show down. <laughs> Tommy oh, don't girl. know. We go ahead. Don't know. Know. Watch. We'll go ahead. Go I ahead, Professor. Know. I know everything. I'm just <laughs> messing with you. <laughs> I know every single thing. Sit back up. No, Shirley, catch up. Really, catch okay. up. It's so right. good. Because I, I promise you, you're going to like it. But it's some it's some beautiful ladies on there and some yes. nice brothers on there. But, man. It's going it's, it's some drama. Some of them are a bit touched. Now, they're a bit All right. touched. <laughs> All right. I'm well, just the advice giver. That's who I am. That's <laughs> what's shocking. And you do your job Shut well. up. <laughs> coming yes. up at the top of the hour, entertainment and national news. That's coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so in an interview with Esquire magazine, 82-year-old Billy D. Williams says he sees himself as feminine as well as masculine. Billy D. said, I've never tried to be anything except myself. I think of myself as a relatively colorful character who doesn't take himself or herself too seriously. He explains, and you see, I say himself and herself because I also see myself as feminine as well as masculine. I'm a very soft person. I'm not afraid to show that side of myself. All right, Lando, Calrissian. What? Yeah. What? Hey, what? when I start getting old, y'all stop me, okay? When, what you mean? Uh, from what? Chrissy, <laughs> Billy D. I've just noticed a pattern. When, <laughs> when we as black men get old, we start running our damn mouth. You got yeah. 20 y'all more stop years. me. Y'all stop me if I start saying stuff. You know, I've always wondered. You know, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Steve, Steve, 
team. Yeah. Uh, come on, Can't Rich. Stop yeah, me. Surely, Bring it uh, in, huh? You shouldn't have read Bring the letter, though, Shirley. Because, see, because, see, listen, uh, uh, what's it? Quincy's kids, Quincy's daughters had to go get him. Yeah. They said, Daddy, Daddy, <laughs> the hell is oh, you talking about? Okay, so Yeah, tell he me had to start retract his statement. Billy, Billy Kid's yeah. going to come for him, too. Now, I just had, I had Billy D. Williams on the last season of my talk show. William December Williams. Oh. What'd he say, Steve? Okay. I, I, you you know, I, I just had him as a special guest on Harvey's Hundreds. It was sort of crazy, man. I wanted to sit down and talk with him, but, uh-huh. you know, I just had him on the show. He still had it, walked yeah. out. He was Billy D. Swagged yeah. up, People had some red him. velvet shoes on. I said, I am definitely going to keep it pimping at this age. <laughs> but I will not be making said statements. <laughs> okay, he what, said, what you think he meant, Shirley, when he said he got a soft side or a feminine side? What does that that's mean? That's what he yes. means. That's what he meant. That he, he said it. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah, he yeah. Meant. it's very clear that he, he sees himself as feminine as well as masculine. He's a very soft person, and he's not afraid to show that side of him. I don't think he was saying that he wasn't a man or that he wasn't right. masculine. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that. Yeah. Yeah, not not at all. He's no. just embracing his femininity. You know, mm-hmm. he sees yeah. some of that in, in himself, and he's embracing. I mean, people it. look. Look, I mean, people say real men don't cry. Mm-hmm. But then, what mm-hmm. that say about me? Well, I must not be yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dog, man. Yeah, <laughs> I be sitting up having some moments, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, and he but says really, he... I understand it. But if I go further than that, just stop me. No. <laughs> and he says, yeah, he doesn't take himself. You know, your ass be crying. You know that, so I know yeah, you. Yeah, you yeah. fully man. Yeah, you yeah, full yeah, man. Yeah. So. I, I bought dinner one time for him. He started crying then. <laughs> yeah, Stephen. Yeah, because like I didn't because I didn't think we was, was going to be able to pay for it. <laughs> I know, Steve. But uh, you can catch Billy D in uh, the, the the movie Star Wars: The Rise of Star Walker, uh, The Rise of Skywalker. That opens December twentieth. That will be the latest installment of the Star Wars um, series. Uh, D Wade fires back at social media trolls for criticizing his son Zion's appearance in the family photo. D Wade came out. He why, uh, why, is, why are people messing with people's kids? What what they say? Yeah. He's defending his 12-year-old son, Zion, after Internet trolls criticized his appearance in a family photo. The Instagram uh, picture shows Wade, of course, Gabrielle Union, his son, Zion, and baby Kavia next to each other on the stairs. Most people complimented the photo. Some haters took issue with Zion's manicured nails and uh, crop top. Um... So Dwayne Wade said, I've seen some posts Thanksgiving hate on social about my family photo. Stupidity is a part of the world we live in, so I get it. But here's the thing. I've been chosen to lead my family, not y'all. So we will continue to be us and support each other with pride, love, and a smile. There you go. All right. All right. That's all right, right. Steve. That's yeah. Right. The, yeah. that was to the nail response. shop this evening. I got, I I got, I got something to on. say about that afterwards. Are we doing Miss Ann right now? Yeah. Let's, yeah Ladies let's and gentlemen, Miss Ann. Ann Tripp. Thank you very much, everybody, and good morning. The impeachment inquiry now moves from the House Intelligence Committee to the, the Judiciary Panel, which will decide whether or not to bring articles of impeachment against President Trump, specifically for allegedly abusing his power in pressing Ukraine into investigating potential political rival Joe Biden and his son. Now, the Intelligence Committee gives the panel its report today, and then tomorrow the panel is to hold a public hearing focusing on the definition of an impeachable offense. Like, what is it? A full House vote on impeachment is expected by the end of this month. Trump administration proposed three changes to the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. That's SNAP. That's the food stamp program. And a watchdog, pro, a watchdog group says the changes will greatly, greatly reduce the number of Americans who are eligible for food stamps. Close to 4 million fewer Americans will be eligible for food stamps after that. Meanwhile, the U.S. unemployment rate remains at a 50-year low, but the downside is that nearly half of Americans are employed in low-wage jobs, paying a median annual wage of only $18,000 a year. That's according to the Brookings Institution. And contrary to public opinion, those positions are not being held by teenagers or young adults. Most of those 53 million low-wage workers say the survey says between are between the ages of 25 and 54. Those are the prime working years. And that even though the economy is adding more jobs, 
Many of those positions do not offer the kind of wages and benefits required to get ahead or even break even. Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot made a shocking announcement yesterday. She said she was firing police uh, superintendent Eddie Johnson just weeks before he was set to retire. His termination related to his being found in his car back in October asleep. He was outside of his home. He insisted he fell out because of his cardiac medication. However, he has now admitted that he had a couple of drinks with dinner that night, which didn't sit well with the mayor. Eddie Johnson intentionally lied to me several times. He maintained that he was telling the truth. I now know definitively that he was not. Had I known these facts at the time, I would have relieved him of his duties as superintendent then and there. I certainly would not have participated in a celebratory press conference to announce his retirement. Mr. Johnson failed the hardworking members of the Chicago Police Department. He intentionally misled the people of Chicago, and he intentionally misled me. None of that is acceptable. Firing Chief Johnson may mean his loss of the pension he's worked to accrue all the many years he's been an officer. There are people in the community who feel that Mayor Life was being a little bit too hard. U.S. Appeals Court in Washington refusing to allow the Trump administration to start executing federal death row inmates this month. Today is National Hook Someone Month. I will. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, you wanted to comment on uh, this hey, you know Wade something? situation. It, 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 it amazes me. You know, Dwayne Wade and uh, Gabby and their family are on the steps, and they posted a picture, right? And then they come out against Their Thanksgiving photo, family His photo. son. Mm-hmm. You know what? It's, it, it amazes me how people have no idea what parenting is like. You know, uh, pe- people don't know what that is until you have children you do not know what parenting is. And you do not know that in loving your children unconditionally is a part of parenting. That you have to accept, understand, and deal with all types of things as a parent. These people kill me who have no regard for parent making statements, I wouldn't allow that if I was a parent. You you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. People get to make decisions that they want to make. It has nothing to do with you being a great parent, a bad parent, a questionable parent. It's called unconditional love. That you love your children in spite of anything that comes down their way. No matter That's what, what no, love, right. you, right. it don't That's matter, it. man. What they do, what they say, how they get caught out there. Your job as the parent is to love them unconditionally. And if you don't have children, you can't know that. It's easy to sit around and say what you wouldn't do and what you wouldn't allow and how they let that, how he, how she. Hey, man, until you get kids, Mm -hmm. you have no idea what parenting is about. None. And when you do, you're going to find out. And for those of you with young children, children talking about when my kids get there, I ain't going to let that. Yo, uh uh-uh, stop, stop, Mm -hmm. stop. Stop. You don't know. I trust me, you don't know. Yeah. No matter what the situation is. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you You something else too, man, because I've made mistakes, but my parents never knew about it. Cause guess what? Wasn't no phone cameras. Wasn't no, uh, you know, (laughs) social social media. media. Right. Oh right. boy, I, I did some stuff that would have shamed the family. <laughs> but I got away with it because it wasn't. Well, that's not the situation anymore. Nope. No. And now our kids Everything. are subject to the opinions of other people. And now you get to watch everybody's life played out, whether they want it to or not. It's all that's on it. Front Street, baby. It's all on Front yeah. Street. It's so crazy, man. Yeah. So, mm. so crazy. Can't do it in secret anymore. No. Nah. But I support the Wade family. I think they're great. I think they're doing I, th- I think they're doing what great parents do. Okay. Yeah, See, I do love careful. how supportive they are of each other. Very much so. What you yeah. gonna do? You gonna run them off? All right. Uh coming up more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. So Saturday Night Live star and also stand-up comedian Pete Davidson required his fans to sign a $1 million non-disclosure uh, agreement, that's an NDA, uh, before attending his recent stand-up comedy shows. Uh, the contract states that attendees cannot discuss 
any details of the show or your experiences at this event. That includes on what? social media platforms, all of that. Ticket holders who chose not to sign the NDA were not allowed into the shows, but were given full refunds. The contract received backlash online with some calling uh, Pete Davidson overbearing and others accusing him of not wanting to face possible criticism over jokes. So, Steve, I got to ask you, uh, <laughs> what? First of all, who what? the you hell see a is show Pete and you Davidson? can't say nothing about <laughs> Wait, who, wait, okay. what? What's what's Steve? Wait, 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 it's too, wait, what's Steve? Who the hell is Pete Davidson? That's what, a, a million dollar NDA, who is? Okay, okay, let me tell Eddie you. Eddie Murphy ain't never asked for that. Richard right. Pry ain't asked for that. The right. Kings ain't asked for it. Kevin Hart the Chappelle Kings. ain't asked for it. Who the hell is Pete Davidson? Davidson. Okay, you may know him if I tell you who he's dated, Steve, okay? Because that's also very newsworthy. It's always in the news who he's dated. He's dated Ariana Grande, for instance. He's dated yeah. uh, actress Kate Beckinsale. And lately what? he's dating uh, Cindy Crawford's daughter. Um, Cindy Crawford's daughter? Yeah, yeah. I still don't yeah. know. Her. Randy I, girl, I, don't, I, I, I don't have a picture daughter. yet. I, I dated Melba Moore's cousin. Ain't nobody said a damn thing <laughs> about <Melba> that. <laughs> Sydney Crawford's <laughs> daughter. And Ariana Grande. Yes, yes, they were yeah, hot. Well, Boy, she's I dated now. Michelle uh-huh. Pierce. If you'd have seen her. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Woo! Uh-huh. But she, she was gorgeous, Steve. Little Ariana Grande, she cute and all. Yeah, and she's very talented, uh-huh. right? Mm-hmm. Oh, she cute, cute as she want to be. Woo! <laughs> That's my favorite. Woo! I love Ooh. when he does Lord that. have mercy. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> she must be bad, huh? Cause you keep going. Talking about boy, I'm talking about strong. Sitting up here talking about he go, he got to sign up, one million dollar NDA. NDA. Nobody talk about you. Mm-hmm. What? No. How good is these jokes? He's requiring, yeah, yeah. He's requiring his fans to sign that, cause um, he, he, that's what he that's what he wants. He doesn't want anybody talking about his jokes. <laughs> You can't, dog. Just and take their phone. If you don't want it, yeah, that's what uh, Dave, Dave Chappelle does. Put him in phone jail. Chris yeah. Rock, too. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah phone jail. Put the phone yeah, in the Kevin. bag, zip yeah. it up. That's Kevin it. Hart. Phone jail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. You ever have people in the aisles that they catch you? Take yep. the picture. They throw the you out. ushers. Yeah, they, yeah. they take it right on yeah. out. Mm-hmm. But if you don't want to sign the NDA, you're not going to get no money from no black people, no way. You're not going to get no money from no black people. You're not saying something. Yeah, oh, we ain't gonna have it. You just, you're not gonna get it. <laughs> I mean, that's a good idea. I think he's just doing it. You know, publicity, he's just doing he it a as a. Uh, yeah, I don't really think that's serious, man. You ain't. Come on, man. How you gonna come know on. if I told? Well, I saw somebody tweet it. I went to the Pete Davidson concert, but I can't tell you about it. Because <laughs> <laughs> so I signed you know, it. Yeah. Because if they yeah. find out, you'll you'll have to pay that million dollars because you put your name to it. And if you didn't sign, you get your full refund back. So, hmm. where are they getting a the damn million from? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We ain't got it. So would y'all make people do that? Sign an ND? No. Make black Hell people no. sign? I ain't gonna have nobody at the show. <laughs> no. <laughs> Being no, black so people long. ain't signing nothing with a million dollars. <laughs> Most black people are signing thinking that they owe. Oh, so I got to give you a million dollars. <laughs> to hear some jokes. <laughs> you, you know how many people gonna be hollering from the front? Is Tommy back there? <laughs> no, send his ass out no. here. He just lost hey, his hey, damn mind. Yeah, that's right. You'll find out how funny you are. Million dollars. You ain't that damn funny now. <laughs> Right, right, you right. Right. You know, I, I almost didn't want to pay this hundred. Would you sign a, an NDA to go to a comedy show? Post your comments at uh, Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook. Coming up, Nephew Tommy here with today's prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, about four minutes after, uh, my strawberry letter for today. Subject, my mom likes taking care of young'uns. Mm. All right, mm. mama. Okay, but right now, nephew in the building with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Nev? Will you marry me? 
No. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, like for the holidays. You know what I'm saying? Oh, temporary. You know, something like that. Short term. Yeah. Wait, yeah. what? All right. Let's go, Cat Dog. Hello? Hey, I'm trying to reach Brad. Yo, this is Brad. What's up? Hey, what's going on, Brad? Hey, this is Kenny, man. What's going on with you? Who? Kenny. Uh, uh, you know, I, I know you through, uh, through Scotty. Oh, oh, that's my brother Rick Potton. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ought to know me through Scotty, man. I done hung out with y'all a few times. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. What's, what's, what's good with you? Oh, man, first and foremost, man, happy holidays to you, brother. Appreciate it, man. Likewise, it's up, my man. Yeah, yeah. You hustling, man? You out there getting it? Man, you know, I'm just chilling, man. Just trying to try to make it happen and get through the season. You know how it is. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Hey, what your name was again, though? Kenny, man, Kenny. Kenny, okay. I'm, Kenny. I'm trying, Kenny. To, are you, are I'm trying you? to put a face with it, dog. You know what I'm saying? I don't just remember it like off. Right, 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 right. I, I used to work with Scotty, man, but even after, you know, I, I left that job over there, we still we were still kind of hanging together, me, him, and your brother Rick, man. Every night and then you come out, you, you, you'll know me as soon as you see me. Oh, okay, yeah, because I'm... Yeah, I'm struggling with that one, bro. But yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, hey, hey, uh, man, I really actually called you, man. I, I tried to do something big for Christmas, you know, and uh, I wanted to reach oh. out to you, man, and, and, and see if you would be down for uh, for doing some doing a couple things, man. Oh, okay. What you talking about the uh, the little hookup thing I had? Uh, them TVs and things. Them them what now? Yeah, the TV. You know, I used to do the TVs. I don't, I don't do it no more though, dog. If that's what you calling about, man, I, I'm out the business, man. My man doing a solid three on that man. I'm I'm done with that dude. I'm I'm strictly legit, dude. Oh, okay. No, it ain't got n- nothing to do with no TVs. No. Oh, you, you, okay. 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 You oh you okay? You used to have a hook on the TV. You think that's why I'm calling? Yeah, that's what I thought you was calling about. What's up? Oh, okay, man. Here he, he what's up, man. I wanted to do something special Christmas, man. And you, know, I thought about it, thought about it, man. Trying to get my courage up to to ask you, dog. Uh. You know, it seemed like we always had a good vibe every time we uh we got together. You know, everybody was kind of real cool. Me, me and you, I know you don't remember, man. We played, you know, we played heads up dominoes with each other, man. It, it was, you know, I think we hit it all pretty good. Okay. So, well, what I wanted to do, man, what what you doing for Christmas? Uh, yeah, I don't know just yet, player. I don't really know just yet. What, what what's up? Well, man, I I I know it's gonna sound kind of crazy, man, but uh, you know, I've been thinking about it a long time. Hey man, we we will you uh on Christmas Day, man? We we will you marry me? Did you just ask me to marry you? Who? Who the? Who the? Is this a guy? This this Kenny, man. This Kenny, man. Like I said, I used to run with Rick, now, man. That's how I know you. I know I know Rick, your brother. But yeah, that's how I used to see you, man. With with with. I, I know it's kind of kind of strange or whatever, but you know, no, you know, I've been wanting to. What the f- did you just ask me, dude? I hope you said come carry you somewhere. Because I know, like, f- you didn't say what well, I thought you said. No, I, I, so I, I, please, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you ask me. for your hand in marriage, man. I would give you my hand, but I guarantee it won't be in marriage. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm just, I'm a little disappointed, though. I, I thought you'd have been excited about it. I'm just excited about kicking your ass. That's about it. Hold up. I tell you what, bro. I don't remember who you are, but if you show yourself, I'm going to marry your to the pavement. Trust and believe that. What? Hold on. When the did we hang out together, and what made you think you could ask me some like that? Tell me what the hell you saw in me so I can change that to make you feel like you could ask a grown heterosexual man to marry you? Hey, man, I mean, you know, all over the country, man, people people, people getting married, dude. So, I mean, it's not a, it shouldn't be a big surprise, you know? That's who know each other, who like each other. You don't ask what I wear a certain cologne that you up. Let me know what it is. I mean, I don't know what kind of vibes you was getting from me. Believe me, I would like get my feet done again. No, that's so that's some look, bro. If another man want to marry another rusty man, I'm okay with that. If two pretty chicks or two ugly chicks want to get married, I'm cool with that. Shit. But what in the hell happened to make your want to ask me some like that? What the we hang out? And how in the hell did you get my number? Hey man, hey dog, you you getting all excited, man? You, you need to calm down a little bit, man. I'm just I'm just trying to I'm just trying to talk to you. Calm my. As a matter of fact, you know what? I'm calling my brother and, and I'm gonna ask this if he know your so we come see your 
and I'm gonna knock you the out. What's your whole name? I'm gonna up. How the hell you gonna call? Brad, 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 Brad please, that. Brad, please, come on, man. Just think Stop twice about me. my name. You don't know me. Will you think twice about marrying me? What the? Don't call my no more. No, this is what I wanted for Christmas, man. I wanted this for Christmas. Best thing you can get for me is man Christmas. That's it. Give me no number. Let me call my brother, ask him who the you are, so we come over there and dismiss your because this is uh, Hey, you know what, man? You you getting you getting too irate, man. I, I, what do you mean? I'm getting irate. You call a grown heterosexual man and ask him to marry you? What the you expect? Hey, hey, hey. I thought it was all right to call you, man. I thought it was, I thought you would be more open-minded. What the f***, man? It's too far with all that to call me. What the f*** wrong with you? So, so you, Brad, will not take my lovely wedding hand in, 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 in marriage to love, to I won't honor. take your arm, your leg, your nothing, and nothing. So wrong with you, bro. Just what is your name and what's your number? That's all I need from you, that's it. Okay, okay, here, take here, take the number down, man. You ready? Yeah, give me the number. 877-29-STEVE. Huh? 877-29-STEVE. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> hold on, dog. <laughs> what the <laughs> f*** that? Man, hold on, man. Hey, Brad, this nephew Tommy, baby. Your brother Rick got me to prank phone call you, man. <laughs> I'm going to say this right now mm. from what we heard in the last break. Listen, don't go nobody tell nobody about this prank you just heard. You need to sign a million dollars disclosure. All right? You can't NDA. Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All that. Mm -hmm. But I will sue your behind if I find out you talking about this prank right here. You understand? <laughs> say that? one word. Say one word about it. <laughs> what? I dare you. sounds so damn uh, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> no, you ain't talking to us. <laughs> as ignorant as possible. Pete Davidson. He's tripping. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what we got? I'm jumping off comedy, uh, comedy laugh fest, mm -hmm. comedy laugh fest, 27 through the 31st. All right, the first one is in the DMV. That is the DC, Virginia, Maryland area. Uh, Tommy Davidson. This David, this is a different Davidson. What y'all talking about? DL Hughley, Eddie Griffith, Dion Cole, hosted by yours truly. You can go to thomasmiles.com. You can see all the cities we going to. We're going to be in D.C., Chicago, Tommy Atlanta, Davidson, New Hughley, Orleans. Eddie Griffin, and uh, Dion Cole. That's a pretty good show. And it's a good, it's, a, it's even a, a better Great lineup. Show. Uncle Steve, New Year's Eve, man. Your boy working, boy. That is Cedric the Entertainer. Mm. D.L. Hughley, Dion Cole, and they done threw in Mark Curry in the building and hosted by the nephew. That oh, wow. Mm. That's big. I love Smart it. Smart Financial, Houston, Texas, New Year's Eve. It's Sugar Land. Okay. <laughs> in other words, how many tickets you need, Carl? How many yeah. tickets you going to need? In other words, Carl going to need a sex. <laughs> I'm blowing my lips like J. Anthony Brown yes. does. <laughs> All right. <laughs> my six pair. All right, nephew. Thank you. Coming up next, Strawberry Letter subject. My mom likes taking care of the youngins right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now, guys, for today's Strawberry Letter. And listen, if you need advice on relationships, on dating, on work, on sex, on parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to Steve Harvey FM and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. Buckle up. Hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, a Strawberry Letter. Subject, my mom loves taking care of young'uns. Dear Stephen Shirley, my mother and I are very close and live together. We recently re relocated to a new city a few months ago because of my new job. My mother is retired and loves to go play bingo, and she goes to the casino weekly. She also likes to date and entertain men that are too young for her. My mother is in her late 60s, and I'm in my late 40s. 
The guy is 36 years old, and they spend a great deal of time together. He's a cook at the bingo hall that she goes to, and she says they hit it off instantly. I'm not sure what an older woman would see in this man, but I do know what he sees in her. My mom is constantly with this guy, and he comes over and lounges around at our home. My mom even sold him her older car, but whenever it's time for him to make a payment, there is some kind of excuse or he spends the night with my mother so she will forget about it. She always seems to find some stray dogs and have pity on them. This guy has new clothes and an upgrade to his lifestyle, so he's happy. I confronted the guy when my mom wasn't around, and I asked him if he was seeing anyone else, and he told me to mind my business. This young man is disrespectful, and I want him to stay away from my mom. It's like my mom is a teenager, so if I talk to her, about leaving this man alone, this young man alone, it will only make her want him more. How should I handle this? I, I, I've thought about just letting it play out like her other flings do, but I think this guy is slicker than the other young men in the past. Am I totally out of line? I know you guys will let me know. Please help. Well, it's not that you're out of line. I mean, you should care about your mother, especially if she's being played by by this young man. But the problem is, here's the problem, son or daughter. You didn't say which one. Uh, your mom is good and grown. Good and grown, okay? And uh, you can care. I think it's a daughter. Yeah, you think it's a daughter? Yeah, you, you very can, much so. Because the dude, do because the way the letter was written. Yeah, he keeps saying, my mom, my mom, my mom. And, and, you know, you can care and all that, you know, and, and not like the dude and everything, but you cannot tell your mom what to do. I mean, sorry, she's in her late 60s. Didn't you say that? She is going to do what she wants to do, when she wants to do it, and who she wants to, okay? I, I mean, I'm sorry, but the, the guy is right. You have to mind your own business at this point and, and just let it play out like the other flings have played out and support your mom, you know, when it's over. But uh, please let the young man know that you are watching him. You have your eyes on him and he better not hurt your mom or, or do, you know, wrong her uh, any, any more than getting a few dollars from her and things like that. Uh, definitely don't physically hurt her in any kind of way. But yeah, I mean, your mom's grown. She's going to do what she wants to do. Late 60s. Mind your own business. That's that's pretty much the deal here. Steve? Yeah. Well, Shirley, uh, because I know this letter is written by a woman, because one line in this letter clarifies it. Uh, uh, I confronted the guy when my mom wasn't around, and I asked him if he was seeing anyone else. He told me to mind my business. If you say that to a dude about his mama, that's an ass whooping. <laughs> Soon as you say that mm-hmm. to a man, are you seeing anybody else mind your damn business? Mm, my mama dog. Yep, that's a whooping. So that's it's, it's a couple other things, but I just wanted to share that with you. Okay. All right, my mom lady's taking care of youngins. Um, this I think I think it's a daughter and her mother. They're very close. They live together. Uh, she got a new job, the daughter did, and because of my new job, your mother being retired loves to go play bingo, and she goes to the casino weekly. That's old people stuff. Old people love bingo. <laughs> now, when you see young people that love bingo, it's because they on their way to becoming old people that love bingo. <laughs> Bingo is an old sport, and they good at it, too. They can have five, six cards, eight cards. I can only play with one card. I've been to bingo twice, hated it. I was sitting next to a chain smoker, and this oh. old white woman wore me out. With a cigarette, son. Huh? Yeah, with a cigarette. <laughs> and she had about 12 cards. She was just hitting them dots. So anyway, uh, uh, she also likes to date <laughs> and entertain men that are too young for her. Mm-hmm. My mom in her late 60s. I'm in my late 40s. The guy is 36. Mm. He's a cook at the bingo hall that bingo. she goes to, and she <laughs> says they hit it off instantly. I'm not sure what an older woman would see in this man. It's them wings. Mm. <laughs> this boy fries <laughs> a mean ass chicken wing. <laughs> and your mama said, Good Lord. I can have this at the house, too. Mm. You're not sure what she sees in him. It's them damn wings. 
Now, the bingo hall, they have a different kind of food because they don't want you staining up the cards real bad. But they don't really care no more because you don't turn the cards back in. You throw them away, they disposable. So he don't care if it's greasy food, but the boy cook a mean way. Wow. My mom is constantly with this guy. He comes over, lounges at your house. Your mama sold him her older car. But when it's time for a payment, there's an excuse. And then he spends the night at my mother, and then she'll forget about it. Oh, ho, young boy. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, you want your mm. money? Mm. Well, let's go on in the back. <laughs> Put something on your mind, make you forget about it. This All is right. a disaster. Hold that thought, Steve. <laughs> We're going to have part two of your response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Subject of today's strawberry letter, my mom likes taking care of youngins. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It's Transformation Tuesday, ladies. I want you to fall in love with your hair color. Let's get a hair color transformation. Do you want multi-dimensional hair color? I'm talking vibrant, shiny, natural looking results or do you just want to cover up that stubborn gray just in time for the holiday parties? Listen, hair color is about feeling your best self. So go check out madison-reed.com Get gorgeous salon quality hair color delivered to your door for less than $25. Go to Madison dash read.com and steve harvey morning show listeners i'm gonna hook you up give you 10 percent off plus free shipping on your first color kit use the code carla that's code carla all right steve come on let's recap today's strawberry letter subject my mom loves taking care of youngins all right we're assuming that this is a mother daughter duo uh the young daughters and she's in her 40s mama's her late 60s uh she go play bingo and casino every week and uh she likes to entertain men that's too young for her. Her mama's in her late 60s. I'm in my 40s. It's kind of like women do the same thing that men do. They have these midlife crises, and they try to prove that they still got it. And that men do two things. We go buy a car that don't look good on us, and we go get a young girl. Them the two things we do for midlife crisis. Oh, we yeah. get a car that don't look good. Or what old ass dude want to climb out a damn sport car and need a hand to get up out of it? <laughs> they do it every day, though, uh, Steve. Man, and they crawling out the cars. I be looking at them, man. They don't even look good in them no more. But anyway, that's another thing. And they get young girls. So sometimes women do the same thing. Go get these young dudes, right? Now, I'm not sure what an older woman would see in this man, Mm -hmm. but I know what he sees in her. Okay, I understand what he see in her, but, you know, the boy down there, he young. He a cook at the bingo hall. Now, I'm not knocking you being a cook at the bingo hall, but that ain't the most upwardly mobile position in the world. So certainly it ain't your mama looking for a come up, but clearly he is. Oh, yeah. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Now he comes over, he lounged around the house. My mom sold him his older car, but when it's time for a payment, he take it in the back, do something to it, and then your mama forget about the payment. Mm, what payment? You know, this pay, uh uh-uh, uh, you know, we in here doing some things, putting it on you, young boy style. Car. Bunny oh, rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> She always <laughs> seems to find some stray dogs and have pity on them. Mm-hmm. Uh, this guy has new clothes and updated his lifestyle, so he's happy. Now, here's the part that we talked about earlier. I confronted the guy when my mom was around, asked me if he was seeing anyone else. He told me, mind my business. Mm-hmm. See, he talking to you because you're another woman. You say that to a young dude in his 40s, 36, finna get his drawers toe off. For sure. Now, what I think you need to do is incorporate some male help here. Mm-hmm. Does your mother have a brother? Well, see, we got to get some cousins over to the house. Some uncles and stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uncles, all that stuff. You know, bring them over to the house, watch the game. Now, he over there. Let's get his ass uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Perfect one that just got out. See, that, like, yeah, one that just got out and ain't, ain't got much of future, you know? Yeah. <laughs> There's brothers that get out and do really, really well. But then you know when somebody finna mm-hmm. go back. Oh, yeah. Let's yeah. just get him out. He on probation. <laughs> he go back every summer. Let's just go on move it up to the winter. <laughs> so if I talk to her I, about leaving this young man alone, it'll only make her want him more. 
And don't that sound familiar like talking to your kids? Yes, it does. It's reverse. God, <laughs> dog, man. How should I handle this? I thought about just letting it play out like the other flings, but I think this guy's slicker than the young men in the past. I'm totally out of line. Am I totally out of line? You got, no, you're not out of line. Mm-hmm. I think you need to set him up, though. I think huh. you need to set him up. I think you need to go down there to the bingo hall because he got this arrangement somewhere else. You got an iPhone. Take some pictures of him up in another old woman face. He don't know you there. Wear a scarf, some glasses, and a ski mask. Put put a mask on, you know, like you, you know, you know, like a, Stupid. No, you know what all the uh, all the people be walking around with them painter mask on? Uh-huh. Yeah. Put the uh-huh. painter mask on like the smoke bothering you, even though you can't smoke in there no more. And wear that down there and just take pictures of him. Bust him for your mama. Uh-huh. Or bring some uncles into the situation on days he over there lounging, have them come over and lounge. Mm. You may have to have a guy come over that's just huge that you're not interested in on the day that he's over there lounging and ask him to come over there and lounge, but ask him to always sit close to the other dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Scoot up mm-hmm. under the 36, <laughs> make his ass uncomfortable. Yeah, I got that vision. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's what I would do since you're a young lady and you don't really want no trouble. But me, I ain't got no problem with trouble. So that's what I suggest you do. Junior, anything yeah. you want to say? No, I think that's great right there. You mm-hmm. need to get somebody Thank fresh you. out of jail. That's what you need. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In fr- former inmates is always the good. Best uh, ones. Crackheads. Mm-hmm. <laughs> steal the car. They are outstanding. Yeah, so yeah get a crackhead to steal the car. Any member Gosh. on drugs, and we all have them. Mm-hmm. Any member on drugs. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Crackhead will steal the car. Get him. Yes. <laughs> that back. she sold to him. Yes. yes. That he steal didn't pay it, for it. Steal it back, back. and try uh-huh. to sell it back to your <laughs> mama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Call me back at that. Ooh, I yeah. got a deal for you. <laughs> I got a deal for you. <laughs> send it back to your mama. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> He's so stupid. She is ignorant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, listen, uh, post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook. And don't forget to check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Now, coming up at 46 after the hour, Junior Sports Talk. uh, We are loving NFL quarterbacks Deshaun Watson and Lamar Jackson, huh? We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Junior, in the building with uh, Junior Sports Talk. What you got, uh, Junior? How about the Houston Texans? Okay. Huh? Yeah. Houston, Texans, yeah. man. This is the first time in about 10 years we finally beat the New England Patriots. Oh. Woo, I yeah. ain't seen it, but, man, I'm happy. <laughs> man, we finally won. Yes. <laughs> Houston, Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson had to beat the GOAT Tom Brady at least one time before he retired. Now, as we know, the Texans beat the New England Patriots on Sunday night, 28-22. to Now, Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens are now number one in the AFC North and not New England for the first time in about 15 yes, years. Which means... 50. <laughs> I said 15. <laughs> no, not 50. 50. 15. <laughs> what means is Lamar that now, Jackson clouded, man. now mm-hmm. we won't have to go through New England for the Super Bowl. That's a big deal because mm. every time we go up there, we come right back home. Mm. Right. You talking about the Texans? <laughs> yeah. Every time we go to New England, one. the reason why we don't have a Super Bowl is because of Tom Brady. Like you said, uh, when you did the NFL Awards show, haven't y'all thought about knocking Tom Brady off? I did. Yeah. <laughs> the reason why we all in this room because of Tom Brady. He's so excellent, though. Man. Mm-hmm. He got everything, yeah. sure. That's mm-hmm. what I don't like about him. He's oh, he good looking. Yeah. He got, yeah. he got the wife. You got to get to everything. Yeah, he yeah. win all the time. Uh-huh. Yeah. He's good He's looking. a winner. He's mm-hmm. good looking. Very I can't handsome. Stand yeah. him. <laughs> oh, I can't stand him. But we got you on Sunday. Oh, man. It yeah, was a great did. game. Man, it was a great game. Shout out to Deshaun. Man, thank Watson. you, Deshaun. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Shout yeah. out to them DBs. On Brian DB Hoyer couldn't do it. Tony Banks couldn't do it. Hey, All man, these quarterbacks. Is, uh, is, is J.J. Wyatt out for the season? Oh, they say he yes. may come back for the playoffs. J.J. Watts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah I'm He could make the playoffs. He could come back in the playoffs mm-hmm. if we make it. If, if we make it. Well, what's y'all's record? But what a, uh, we announced, what, eight and four? Eight and four. Yeah. Eight and four. That's better than the Browns, ain't it? Oh, yeah. Y'all five. Well, what? 
Well, why are y'all always comparing it to the Browns? Yeah, it's better than the Browns. <laughs> <laughs> why do you always do that to yourself? Just <laughs> some random team. It's better than the Browns. Why you always bring up the damn Browns? Yeah, we better than the damn Browns. Yeah, we better than the Browns. Like, yeah, it's better than the Browns. It's better than Miami. It's better than a lot of people. Hey, Tommy. You always say the Browns. Oh, Tommy. Huh? You're a go-to team. Tommy. Oh, yes. Thanks. Tommy. Oh, oh, we done won five games. <laughs> In two years, we hadn't won five games. You can't take my joy from me. You can't take it? Yeah. Two years, we won one game. We done won five games. You can because kiss I, the can I tell you this, though? dog slippery. Baker Mayfield slippery. got the best commercials. <laughs> he got the best commercials. Yeah, yeah. Baker Mayfield. Uh-huh. Baker Mayfield. You don't need no damn mm. commercial. You need some more damn wins. <laughs> damn That's what they commercial. saying. That's what Cleveland fans yeah. are saying. That's it. Steve. All right, coming up at the top of the hour, putting the fun in funerals is a new trend. We'll talk about it right after this. Yeah, I said it. Yeah. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Miss Kyle Tevlin, Steve, listen to this story. She founded the planning site, I Want a Fun Funeral, to help the trend. Okay, you get to plan your own funeral your way and wherever you want it to be. Kyle is uh, a she, and uh, you can attend one of her workshops on how to plan your own going away party, plan it yourself, or use a consultant. Either way, Tevlin (gasps) says the idea is to bring out your personality and make it a party. You know, as you might recall, Aretha Franklin had a glorious eight-hour affair with wardrobe changes during the time she was lying in state. So why can't we all uh, all go out with a bang? Tevlin says the movement was born out of people saying, I don't want people crying at my funeral. So here's the question, Steve, Tommy <laughs> Jr. <laughs> huh. So would you want to hire a party planner for your funeral? Hell no. Is that a good look? Not for me. I wouldn't nice really DJ. be worried about that. I got a nice problems. Nice DJ. Everybody going to be enjoying it but you. Yeah. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Everybody going to be partying except who the party for. <laughs> Laying up there with your ass. You dead, partner. Yeah. So it's fun for everything but you. And But then New Orleans been doing this for years anyway. Oh. Celebrating the life. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. I ain't really yeah. I ain't really with all that. Mm-hmm. I want everybody crying like- at my funeral. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You yeah, want to be missed, huh? Woo! <laughs> you need all that. Oh, not Steve. <laughs> Whoa, 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 yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Keep going. Yeah. Stay going. Stay. Stay. Yeah. Stay. 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 Stay.
Boy, I'm all in heaven talking about y'all miss mine. Y'all miss mine. VIP. Man, kid Capri turned it out from what I heard. From what I heard. Capri turned it out for me, by We gonna wobble. We gonna do all this. Baby face sang. That was good. That was good. That was good. With the pill. Tender lover. Let me see. Who preached that man? Let me see. Who preached that man? Oh, oh. that's a good one. Oh. oh. Bishop, Bishop Jack. No, Bishop Don Juan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, everybody, we Grand here. Final. You know what I'm saying? Tommy show was cool. <laughs> you know, when he was there, you know, I love Tommy. You know, I'm like, oh. <laughs> Go ahead, Bishop. Go ahead. You know, I always wanted, you know, the thing about Tommy that I love, you know, them pranks, man, that's what I'm going to miss the most, you know. Uh, He's just pranking. Them pranks. Them pranks. Just pranking like, people. We're playing them at Buzzing the people. Buzzing people. Buzzing people. Buzzing people. Buzzing people. Buzzing people. Buzzing <laughs> oh, Bishop, I hate we gotta go. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> coming up, uh, more music, more trending news in 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. <laughs> Steve, Steve go! go! Steve, go! <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, you guys couldn't get enough of this planning funeral story. <laughs> so... Tommy, you say you want somebody to do what at your funeral? <laughs> what? I want to, you know, I want to have one last photo shoot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what? Like a meet, you want a meet and greet? Open, put, you pop that lid open. Everybody come by. Selfie. Take their picture. Keep yeah. it moving. Yeah. All same look, though, Tommy. Though. Yeah. It's going to be the what? same look. <laughs> your face, your smile. <laughs> <laughs> that look that, uh, um, Damn, weekend at Bernie's Damn, he looked the same face. in all the pictures. <laughs> Remember Weekend at Bernie's, the yeah. movie? Yeah. <laughs> Tommy, Tommy, I want somebody. I want somebody. I want extreme stuff at my funeral. Like I what? want somebody like to come up in the pulpit uh, up mm. there behind the choir stand yeah. and climb mm-hmm. up on the cross. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, and go, it should have been me, Lord. <laughs> it's all of that. <laughs> Boy, if you don't get your Steve. ass down off of that cross. Yeah. Just climb up on the cross. And just holler. The neon. Ah! The neon one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, it's hot. This is neon. It's hot. I want somebody to the go neon. up in the balcony uh-huh. and sing my hits hey. from the balcony. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, snatch the mic from the past and do when the phone get the fan. <laughs> <laughs> I got to have Kanye and man with them prills and outfits on. His whole crew. <laughs> Everybody. All right. We got more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show. More of this ignorance coming up at 33 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so in an interview with Esquire magazine, 82-year-old Billy D. Williams says he sees himself as feminine as well as masculine. Billy D. said, I've never tried to be anything except myself. I think of myself as a relatively colorful character who doesn't take himself or herself too seriously. He explains, and you see, I say himself and herself because I also see myself as feminine as well as masculine. I'm a very soft person. I'm not afraid to show that side of myself hey when i when i what? when i start getting old y'all stop me okay when, what from, you mean? Uh, from what Chrissy, <laughs> billy d i've just noticed a pattern when <laughs> when we as black men get old we start running our damn mouth you y'all stop years. me y'all stop me if i start saying stuff you know, I've always wondered. You know, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Steve, Steve, Steve. Yeah. Uh-uh. Come on, Stop yeah. me. Bring it uh-huh. in, huh? You shouldn't have Bring the it letter, in. though, sir. Because, see, because, see, listen, uh, uh, what's it? Quincy's kids, Quincy's daughters had to go get him. Yeah. They said, Daddy, Daddy, <laughs> the hell is oh, you he talking about? Okay, so Yeah, he had what? to start retract his statement. Billy, Billy kids yeah. going to come for him, too. Now, I just had, I had Billy D. Williams on the last season of my talk show. William December Williams. Oh. What'd he say, Steve? Okay. I, I, you you know, I, I just had him as a special guest on Harvey's Hundreds. It was sort of crazy, man. I wanted to sit down and talk with him, but, uh-huh. you know, I just had him on the show. He still had it. Walked yeah. out. He was Billy D. Swagged yeah. up. Had some red him. velvet shoes on. I said, I am definitely 
gonna keep it pimping at this age. <laughs> okay, he what, said, what you think he meant, Shirley, when he said he got a soft side or a feminine side? What does that that's mean? That's what he means. That's what he meant. That he, he said it. Yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. It's very yeah. clear that he he sees himself as feminine as well as masculine. He's a very soft person, and he's not afraid to show that side of him. I don't think he was saying that he wasn't a man or that he wasn't right. masculine. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. That yeah, either. not not at all. He's no. just embracing his femininity. You know, mm-hmm. he sees yeah. some of that in, in himself, and he's embracing. I mean, people it. look. Look, I mean, people say real men don't cry. Mm-hmm. But then, what what mm-hmm. that say about me? I must not be yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dog, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I be sitting up having some moments, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, no. no. <laughs> and he says, yeah, he doesn't take himself. You know your ass be crying. You know that, so I know yeah, you. Yeah, you yeah, fully yeah, man. Yeah, you yeah, full yeah, man. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I bought dinner one time for him. He started crying then. <laughs> yeah, Steven, yeah, Steven cause like I didn't, very because I didn't think we was, was going to be able to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I started yeah, I, need, I know, Steve. But uh, you can catch Billy D in the movie Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. That opens December 20th. That will be the latest installment of the Star Wars series. All right, uh, coming up, our last break of this ignorant day (laughs) and some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey coming up at 49 minutes after the hour right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Uh, Before we get to your closing remarks, Steve, I just wanted to uh, give a shout out to the people in uh, the east, the northeast. In trending weather news, New York uh, Governor Cuomo has declared a state of emergency in multiple counties in New York as an intense winter storm hits the northeast. This storm slammed the uh, east coast on yesterday, closing schools, government offices canceling flights there. Also, more school closures in New England. There are 50 million 50 million people under winter weather watch alerts uh, while uh, more travelers are stranded. So uh, please be aware of that, uh, you know, while you're making your flight plans. And, yeah, uh, yeah, because I, I came Cause... through that last night mm-hmm. and had a delay coming from uh, Abu Dhabi oh, when storm, we landed. Huh? Yeah, due to the storm mm-hmm. that was starting to pick up. But I was you very made fortunate it. to be able to get out. Very, yeah, very you fortunate. made it. Yeah. 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 So. so pray for our neighbors in yeah, the Northeast. Definitely. Stay safe. Yes. Send in your prayers. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. New York, New York. I I just don't know a state that handles more. You know, I mean, New York is a tough place. New York, Florida. New York and Florida get hit. Well, all of them. New York, Florida, Cali. They, you always, well, then you got to go to golf. Yeah. Then, yeah. Okay, let me retract text. that statement. Everybody catching it. Hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chicago Hell, yeah. No matter right where now, you live, Chicago, you got yeah. to be tough. That's yeah. all I got to yeah. say. Yeah. You know, because I started yeah. thinking about it. I said, wait a minute, hold up. New York, no, nah, Florida. No, nah, yeah. L.A., Florida. No, nah, Louisiana. Yeah, Texas. Yeah, that's uh-uh. rough. Tornado Everywhere. Alley. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Yeah. Tornado yeah. Alley across yeah. the Midwest. Yeah. yeah. That was not a good statement. I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> Just everybody. Yeah. You know. What you got? Yeah. It's really and I, th- I think in terms of that, you know, like, uh, let, let me say this in my closing remarks. I think that we all, uh, after that statement I just made, realize that everybody has uh, portions of their life that has, uh, that can be quite challenging at times. Uh, all of us will face the feeling of loneliness sometimes. All of us will face abandonment. All of us will deal with sadness. All of us will deal with disappointment. All of us will have to deal with grief. All of us. The one thing, the one thing that can get you through all of it is a relationship with God. I kid you not, man. I know, I know I say it oftentimes on this show, and I get criticized for saying it on this show, but why would I stop telling a person the truth when what I know to be true is that a relationship with God is sufficient? But it is necessary. The average person goes through a lot of pain that they don't have to endure alone. Listen, life is going to strike you. It's going to strike all of us. It, it strikes the rich, the poor, the just, the unjust. Life 
strikes us all. Wouldn't it be to your advantage if you had a relationship with your creator? I mean, look, God created us all. He created us with the power of choice. In this power of choice, what he really wants us to do is choose him. It's just really that simple. And I'm not the guy on the radio show to tell you how to choose him. The religion you choose is up to you. Baptist, Catholic, Protestant, Jewish, Muslim, Islam, Buddhist, whatever you do, that's Jehovah Witness, Seventh Day of Venice, whatever you, that's you. Who am I to decide for you what's right for you? Who am I to, to, to dictate to you what you should be? We don't have that right. No matter who we think we are, we do not have that right to decide for another person. You can't decide that Islam is wrong. You cannot make that decision. That's not your call. But then on the other hand, you can't make the call or decision that Christianity is wrong. That's not your call. Who are you? Yes, that's not your call. If you don't believe what I believe and you don't want what I want, there's something wrong with you. You know, you hear about all this that's going on in China, these Muslims that's getting persecuted in China, the Jews that get persecuted, the blacks that get persecuted, the, 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 uh, this group that gets persecuted, the gays that get persecuted. You know what? We got a lot of nervous people persecuting other people simply because of who they happen to be. And it ain't like you. Look, man, if you really get in touch with God, God is really about love, man. God is about acceptance of flaws, misunderstanding, characterization, flaw. God is accepting. God is forgiving. But it's not for us to judge. It's not for us to decide who is wrong. God is the judge of all of that. Man, if you get in touch with God, God will help you through a lot of your hard times. And he'll give you a spirit that makes you a lot more accommodating of things that you don't understand and things that are not just like you. All you trying to do is get through this life the best way you can. And along the way, to really get it right, help some other people. If you can get through life the best you can and turn around and help some other people, you are living a pretty good life. That life is best brought about by having a relationship with your creator, your heavenly father. God loves us. Those are my closing remarks today. Thought I'd throw that out hey, there. Drop That's it, it, baby. It's hey, already it. It's done. Like it's Show it. over. Hey, look, have a great weekend. <laughs> you know, congratulations <laughs> to the Texans. Thank you, you know, Tuesday. And pray <laughs> for the Browns. And have a great weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Well, that's it. Y'all have a good one, man. Y'all be good now. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 